No one was harmed in the filming of this sequence. The shit you and your friends do in a pub is what I do and somehow get paid for it. That's my natural hairline there now. Comedians are, yeah, we're very judgmental. I don't really think that the American people are more polarized now than they were 10 years ago. Hey, you're welcome to another episode of The Delve with me, Mike Sheridan. My guest today is an immensely popular stand-up comedian who has achieved remarkable success for someone still so young. Daniel Sloss has already had two Netflix specials, Dark and Jigsaw, and has been performing comedy since his teen years, successfully too. Daniel regularly sells out shows all over the world, and when you watch his unique material, it's pretty easy to see why. His new special is called So Show, and it was taped in Austin, Texas. You can buy this special on Daniel's site, danielsloss.com, for about a fiver, and it is money very well spent. He's also just released another new special, X, free of charge on his site, or it's on HBO, HBO Max, if you're in the US. Make sure to subscribe to the show if you're watching on YouTube or listening on any podcast platform. Enjoy the conversation with Daniel Sloss. Oh man, I, man! If I wasn't a comedian, I would have been to three of the countries I've ever like been to. I'm, I like my tra- traveling's not in my fucking blood. It's in my it's in my job description. Uh, comedy's in my blood, but no, no, the, the, I uh, the the ignorance that you go into these countries with, like man, when we went to Lithuania, like I, at the age of fucking like twenty four, twenty five, I was like, I re- like I reckon it's like. It's, it's, it's old Russia, I think. So I reckon it'll be like a bit Soviety. Like most of the food will be potato based or something. And then you walk into this city where there's street lights that follow you down the street, and you're like, "What? Oh, we don't have this in the fucking UK. How the fuck is this? Doesn't seem fair. Like their internet's better." And you're like, "What? Oh, what the fuck?" Um, I mean, Serbia's not like that. Serbia's yeah. still a little bit fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Zagreb's amazing, man. And it's, you know, these places are, you know, now that I'm, they, they've become genuine favorite places of mine to visit now. Because, yeah. you know, it's not just that the audiences are cool, but it's also, you know, uh, yeah, you just see places that you never thought you'd fucking see before. I mean, I'm, I've, I've gigged in Tokyo. I never would have gone to Japan if not for comedy. It's a, do you do that thing at the start where you try and do something a bit local? Where you depends on the show. Yeah. Depends on the show and depends what mood I'm in. Like when I was doing my ex tour, like no, not at all. That was just the show. I went out and fucking like it was a performance then. Whereas now, because I'm a bit more, you know, laid back, I guess, and 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 less fucking stressed, uh, and I think I just take it less seriously now. Like I'll 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 fuck around at the top for a bit during the show, and man, I you know I I have a couple of drinks on stage whenever I go. I like to be yeah. Well, if you're comfortable on stage, the audience is comfortable, and you've been doing it for so long now at this point for somebody who's so young. I mean, it must just be effortless to you to some degree. Yeah, man. I mean, it really is. Like, more, But I also think that's the, you know, there are several cons in comedy, and one of them is the fact that for, for whatever fucking reason, public speaking is the number one fear. It's yeah. more than spiders, it's yeah. more than heights, it's more than plane crashes, it's more than death. The highest fucking fear the number one fear in the world is public speaking and that's insane that's insane to me um but so it's just that that is this job looks difficult to the masses because they're like well i could never do that you're like oh yeah you could like it's you know if you're comfortable in conversation you're comfortable in conversation making people laugh is well that's the other con (laughs) i'd say no because comedy to me is the most terrifying thing in the world and like i fought i've had mma fights and i've done other crazy stuff like challenges and stuff And I've interviewed people. Fuck it, fuck it, punched in the head. I'm I'm telling you, I've I've been in a cage in my underwear fighting somebody who's way more muscular than I am. (laughs) Like, it's less terrifying than getting up there. I've had to do a couple of things over the years. Like, I interview people on stage. That's fine. I can do that with my eyes closed. It's absolutely fine. But when I have to come out on stage, and I've had to do this at Vicar Street five or six times, where I'll have to come out on stage and just introduce the night. And that is the most terrifying thing in the world because I'm like, I don't know if I don't know if I have CTE. And I'm worried about the memory stuff. But so whenever I see a comedian do it, I'm like, how? 
Are you so well, comfortable? You, we, I, like, I, I understand that because, well, I mean, in those situations, you're walking onto an audience that isn't there to see you. So yeah. that's a different thing. So you you are, and, and look, hey, that's what the start of a comedy career is. The start of a comedy career is walking out and being like, all right, I got to fucking convince this bear pit that I'm worth their drunken attention for fucking five to seven minutes. And you got to be da 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 da. And yeah, like in those moments, that was, I mean, it wasn't scary. I liked that. That was adrenaline building. That was, you know, nice. But now, man, 90% of the people in my audience now are there yeah. because they, they for whatever fucking reason it is, whether they're, they're, they've got deep trauma or their CTE damage, but for whatever reason, I'm their favorite fucking comedian. Man, I could say anything. Like they, they you know, it's walking on to people who adore you is the easiest thing in the yeah. world. Like, I mean, when you're, when people are just there, I agree, man, I mean, you get feelings up there where you're like, man, I bet Hitler felt great at times. <laughs> because like, and this is, this is only 3,000 people, but I mean, you know, everyone says he had such a way with words. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like it's because I wa obviously I watched this, the new special. I watched the Austin special, and I gotta say that moment's kind of in the middle of it with the with the heckling from the Nazi. That's not something I've ever seen before. Oh, like, that was not something I've ever fucking. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> I, we, like was there was there a question about leaving that in or taking? I, I thought it was I, great. I, you I left would, it in. I will go on the fucking record and say I did not want that to be in the show, but I was outvoted. Like I, uh, I'm not a good, I'm not a good judge of my own. Uh, stand up or my own career. I'm I'm hugely self critical to a fault, uh, and I I cannot objectively watch my own work. Uh, I hate everything I've done. Like I hate I cannot watch it. It makes me angry to watch. Like the only stuff I ever enjoy doing is the stuff I'm currently doing. Like the second I'm done with it, like it's it's worse than bumping into like an ex girlfriend that you had a bad relationship with. I cannot fucking stand it. Um. So, because this show is so old to me, like I, like, yeah. you know, I remember this show was, you know, written back in two thousand sixteen, maybe two thousand, yeah, two thousand sixteen, two thousand seventeen was when I was doing the show originally, and then it was recorded in two thousand nineteen. Like it's five years old to me. So to watch it back, I, man, I, ju I just, I, and I had to watch it back to, you know, make sure it was all fine. Um, and I did not want that bit in it because I, to everyone else, like I guess it looks as if I handled it well. Like, that's what that's the feedback I'm getting. But I don't think I handle it well. I, I know how good I can be with hecklers. I know, I've seen me perform 100% of the times I've seen me perform, right? It's like, I have a high, I have a much higher standard for myself than my audience will. Because my audience sees me once a fucking year, right? My agent will see me 50 times a year. My fucking fiance will see me 60 times a year. But they don't see me 200 times a fucking year. I know what I'm capable of. And I think that was a situation where I just looked confident because that's the first, you know, illusion of comedy is to just make sure nobody thinks you're fucking flustered. And the best way to do that is to do nothing. You know, it's the old best trick a teachers used to have. The good teachers, the ones you were scared of, they didn't shout. They just stopped what they were doing. Like they put down the pen and they just looked at the class and slowly everyone shut the fuck up. That's, you know, that that's how you can look powerful but not feel powerful in a situation. And that's all I'm doing. And I don't think, I don't think the, I don't think the retorts were particularly funny. I just don't think it was great. But, and so I, I really, really fought for it not to be in the show. But my family and my loved ones and my like tour support and my agent and everyone who's seen me is, were just like, well, you know, you admit that you can't judge your own work. So, you know, just trust us and leave it in. But what I mean, the way it bleeds into it is interesting because you're talking about friends bringing somebody to the show or like somebody bringing a friend to the show who may not necessarily be a fan of yours. Yeah. And you have a Nazi heckle you. Like the yeah. timing was. Yeah. I'm still not sure if he was like a real Nazi man. Like I never got to talk to after the show. Yeah. Because sometimes I think, man, people just sometimes misjudge jokes hugely. I mean, that's what most controversy is when it comes yeah. to comedy. It's just somebody saying the wrong thing. They misread a fucking room. Very rarely is it like ill intention. So I'm like, it could be that. I mean, it certainly felt hate film because of the words used. But, you know, then again, I make jokes about death and cancer. So who the fuck am I to judge about <laughs> this, you know? Well, I gotta say, it was refreshing watching the special from 2019 because it's not overtly topical and you don't have to address COVID. You know, there's a brief mentioning kind of of Trump, but not really. It's just, it's just funny. You yeah, know, I will, but yeah, but to me, it's so fucking outdated, man. Like that, man, that opinion that being left wing, you're only as left wing as the, you know, the next person after you. That was really, really, like, not ahead of its time, but that was really current in 2017. I'm releasing it in 2022. I'm like, oh man, what boring old trodden 
topic. Like people are going to watch this. this isn't groundbreaking anymore. This isn't like what it was at the time. Because you know, I wasn't the only person saying it back then, but heaps more people are saying it now. And you know, I think it's yeah. I mean, this I, I'm so glad this special is coming out because I mean, the the bane of my career so far has been just getting my back catalog out, man. Like I man, I write a lot of shows, right? I, I you know, I used to write a new show every year. And and it was only towards the end that we filmed them. Then and then just places, you know, I got two Netflix specials. That was amazing. Right, changed my fucking career. And then I had a new. I, and then I had this show. And then I had um fucking X. And they were like, well, we've just given you two specials. You know, we'll talk talk to us in two or three years. Like, come on, let's be reasonable here. So I, that's why I took fucking HBO uh, X, and they took it there. And 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 then now I'm just here with this. And I mean, Hubris has been filmed. Like, it's hopefully within the next couple of months along with this release i'll have gotten rid of everything behind me and i just think that'll be a uh, it'll be a ma it'll be a fucking massive way off because it will just be nice because people will so often come up to me after shows and like where can i watch this where can i watch this and i'm like oh man i'm i'm as frustrated as you are like if it was up to me i thought to have this stuff on youtube like four, three years ago if the, you know if it was down to me but again i got fucking outvoted <laughs> But well, comedians are doing that now, right? Well, I mean, not at your level, the level you're at now, 15 odd years in and the amount of specials you have. But comedians are doing that now. They're just putting specials up on YouTube. It's it's a really interesting way of doing it because you can you can shoot stuff relatively cheaply now. Yep. Yeah, and man, it's it's the thing I really like now is it's I don't know if, if it will become a full meritocracy, but it certainly feels like comedy is now going the way of being a meritocracy. And it's never been. It's it's kind of it's 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 a meritocracy. To the extent that, like, if you're funny, you will you will find your way up the ladder, slowly and surely. But that has no guarantee of you know success. There are agents, there are TV companies, there are, um, you know, there's there's and there's politics in 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 comedy. Um, why have I started this rap? What was I fucking talking about? Well, I was, I'll upload stuff to YouTube's a meritocracy. Oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. So so um. I mean, I I know some of the best comedians in the world who just haven't had TV opportunities because they just, just don't tick the right boxes. And as somebody that got onto television because he did tick boxes, I'm very aware of how unfair this, you know, can uh, be. And whereas now, because of TikTok and because of Instagram and because of YouTube and stuff, people are able to get a direct link to their fucking audience straight away. Like there's there's no need for the middleman. There's no need to be on a television show to be discovered. There's no you know you're not relying on an agent picking the right talent on the right channel so that it can be seen by the most people. People are now finding people they find funny automatically thanks to these fucking algorithms. And uh, I think it's such an interesting time in comedy because man, I, look, I know the power of streaming services. Netflix changed my career overnight. It changed my fucking career. Like I went from four hundred seats uh, on average to two and a half thousand in the course of six months and that was that was that that's right? insane yeah oh, it's, it's insane it changed my career overnight it was you know palpable i'm a different person to who i was before that all fucking happened and but at the same time now because of that you know man i get to we know you know the numbers i do around the world well when, you know, when i'm touring australia which for whatever reason my, is my biggest market we know how big i do in europe we know how big i do in america we know how big i used to do in russia um <laughs> You know, we know all of those numbers, but then it's like, okay, what happens if you do just bring it directly to them? Like, if you do go, uh, because like when X was out only in America because it was on HBO, deep down, like I was, I never, I never said anything publicly because I wasn't allowed to. But every time somebody, every time somebody pirated X, I was like, absolutely, <laughs> man, absolutely, like because man, I understand what it is. If you don't make something instantly accessible to me. I'm going to steal it. Like, I'm going to get that. There's nothing you can do to stop me from getting that thing. But if you make me pay for it, I'll happily do that. But I'm going to get it. There's no option when I'm not. And it's now nice to, I think, you know, just give people the opportunity to be like, man, it's just a fucking, it's a, it's a fiver and we're doing it to recut, you know, get our costs. It's almost like, point. yeah, it's almost like the honor system. I think that's really fair because if it's reasonable and you can get hold of it, there's so many shows because we are living in the age of that kind of instant gratification and binge watching. And if there's something that's out in the US and it's been advertised and you're seeing it, if you consume that type of content and it's not out here yet, you know, the inclination for a lot of people would be to go and try and find an illegal stream I, if they man, can't. I, man, all, I, all I fucking did when I was a teenager was get fucking pirate DVDs and go on the fucking BitTorrent fucking websites because 
uh, because fuck fuck America for getting season two of Lost before I get season two of Lost. <laughs> fuck off. There's no way that's fair. That's not how the world works. They don't get to watch Lord of the Rings before I get to watch Lord of the fucking Rings just because Hollywood said so. No, I'm going to fucking steal it. And I mean, that was, it was so funny with my agent. Like she kept trying to get, she fought, I mean, God bless her. She spent so long fighting, taking down illegal streams of X. And like in in Russia, she found a website where it had been like I think it had been like illegally streamed ten million times in Russia, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was devastated. And I was like, "Fuck yeah, man! <laughs> that's so cool. That's oh my god. That's like that's amazing to me. Just good. I mean, I don't know how many Russians are, but I reckon that's like well, at least one percent of them. Well, you could definitely you could definitely go and play a stadium in Russia when all of this blows over. I did. I, did. I, I played. I played. Uh, I played an air. I played an air hangar in uh, back oh, in two thousand and nineteen in Moscow to three and a half thousand people. That's mental. Yeah. 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 Before before all of this fucking <laughs> happened. Yeah. It's it mad was, stuff, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And it's such a shame, man. Because I mean, look. I mean, there's very very good people in that. Oh yeah. Country. Like you know, when we were over there, I was fully expecting to be met by this. You know, just because, man, I was going to, you know, I've, I've got, I, at the time I, in my show, I had very, like, pro-gay material. And they make you send your material into Russia before you perform there just so they can look through it. And, you know, I said, I, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, nothing, nothing you can, nothing you can say will ever make me take this material out of my show. Like, you can tell me not to, and then I'll do the show, and then I'll get a plane on, to, on a plane tomorrow, and I'll never come back. Like, you're not, you know, you're not causing an international incident over this. Uh, but then weirdly enough like the gay stuff i was doing like it was definitely contra not controversial to my audience because my audience are obviously very forward thinking people and they're the youth of that country and stuff so it got a big round of applause there the stuff that was weirdly controversial was the sex education stuff really yeah because they don't get sex because they're because they're, they're a deeply christian country man yeah deeply like to it's like and over generations like it's it's real like it's like oh well, man it's like it's it's bad as like you know catholicism over there like it's ingrained in them so they just they, you don't get taught sex in school at all anywhere what, in russia oh what i think is fascinating now in ireland is that when people come here for the first time to perform and i know you've been coming here for years and obviously you live super close is they don't realize how liberal ireland is now like mm -hmm. it's they think it's ireland in the late 80s or even the early 90s when you know the, the right for women to choose passed by like two thirds of vote you know, e you know, equal rights and marriage passed, but like over two thirds of the vote, like that's a blue, that's a very blue state in America. If you wanted to use that analogy, yes, I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, I mean, yeah, certainly in the in the last decades, it's made huge. I mean, it's it's so funny that like how far behind America still is, and like, and then it just occasionally just takes a step back just for the lols, and you're like, what the fuck is going on, man? I saw the comedian, came, I went to see a comedian here in, I won't say who it was, but a few years back, pre, pre to COVID, and you had an opening act with him. And we were talking earlier about doing a little bit on where, you know, this, the city you're in, the country you're in, or whatever, kind of shooting the shit at the top of it. And he was trying to do that, but he made it, he, he said something about uh, Ireland being homophobic. And he got a really weird response from the crowd, but he got a really weird response from the crowd because our Taoiseach, our Prime Minister at the time, was gay and nobody gave a shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 and yeah. I was like, just Google it, man. Just Google it before you come out. I oh, fucking yanks, man. <laughs> well, you, you're you obviously very popular in the States as well. And you've got that relationship with Conan. Um, that's that's a fascinating relationship to me because... You can tell me about it. Oh, man, like, I've, I've had Sona on the show. I've had his assistant on the show. She's awesome. I love oh, she's, Sona. She's, the, she's a proper she's a, Oh, yeah. just what you, what you see is what you get. And her book is great as well. She's hilarious. But how did that relationship come about? Because Conan, to me as well, is he's the ghost, you know? That, yeah, man, he's I 100 agree. I was having a conversation with my mate Kai about this the other day where I'm like, I absolutely, you know, maybe apart from uh, Johnny Carson back in the day, just for like who he was and what he was able to do, I would absolutely say Conan is the best. And I, I'm I'm very biased in this. But I think if you look at not only uh, what he's done over the years with regards to the, I mean, I don't know if you watch Conan Without Borders. It's on Oh, Netflix. brilliant stuff. I think, it's, I think it's a yeah. funny, it's, and it's so funny. And it, the Haiti special is beautiful. Um, it's He's man, he's just so likable. He his back catalogue of what he's done, like with the Simpsons, uh, his writing credits are unbelievable. And he never ever forgot about what it was like to be a young comedian. Because I mean, that is how I got on the show. He 
had a guy who works for, for him called uh, JP Buck, who was the booker for Conan and has been for, you know, years. And he just trusted JP implicitly. And he was just like, go find me the best new talent. And like JP was like, I need to go to Edinburgh then. I need to go to the fringe. Um, and he came over and he saw me and he was like, I would love you to do Conan. And I was like, I'm, I'm, man, I'm one of those people where I'm like, I don't believe anything good will happen to me until it does. And then the whole time I'm like, this is going to be taken away from me at any fucking moment. This is all a trap. Everyone's out to get me. Um, and I flew over to America and like the whole time I was like, there's no way, there's no way I'm going to get on Conan. There's like, even like, as we're driving to the studio, I'm like, there's no way, like something's going to happen. We get to the studio. Nelson Mandela dies. Oh. And I'm like, I fucking knew it. Why do these things always happen to me? Why, why, like, they're obviously just going to talk about fucking Nelson Mandela instead of letting me, like, and that's the ego. That's, that's where you're a piece of shit. Like, it's like me being like one of the greatest men who ever lived. And I'm like, that fucking, he couldn't hold it in a day. That selfish bastard. Um, but thankfully, the, you know, he only did five minutes in the top about him. And, uh, man, I'd been going for a while. And, man, I, I, you know, I could, I'd done enough spots in my fucking career on television. Man, I, I could do a really, really tight five. You yeah. Know? And especially, you know, with the material, I could do a fucking, five. I could do seven really banging tight fives at that point in my career. Um, so I did one of them. And I mean, if you watch the end of my first Conan clip, you can see the shock in Conan's voice when he congratulates me. He was like, oh my God, that was really good. <laughs> Like he was, he was genuinely taken aback by me because I know that because apparently after that he tried to get me booked on the show the next day. Like he said to JP, he was like, "Let's just get him back on." And JP was like, give, "Let's give him a week to like settle and like get his head together." <laughs> but then, literally, any time I was there, Conan made it known that it was like it's an open door policy. Like if you're in the city and you want to be on, then do. And I and I was just like absolutely fucking. Look. And again, like I said, I had so many fives. So anytime I was in LA, I was like, "Yes, please, I'd love to be on the show." Um, and like for me, I, I like I just felt like I was. It, I mean, I find it hard to believe that somebody who I, I who I think is, as you said, is is the goal of late night television to, you know, look at me in that way. But my friend, like two years after, I think I done like six or seven Conan spots at this point. I woke up very hungover in a friend's house. And my friend had sent me this like clip from him. Conan was doing a Q and A at Harvard. And one of the questions was like, do you still get excited watching, you know, stand up comedy? You've been doing the game for like 30 years. You have to watch it, you know, three or four times a week. And you're still excited by it. And he was like, oh, 100 percent. Absolutely. And then goes on to just name check me for like three minutes. And like, and, I, and man, and like I wasn't in the room. Like this was, it wasn't something he ever think of. Like this was j him in conversation, you know, was praising me. And I, st you know, and then I, man, I've done Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Anytime I meet him, he is, you know, supportive. He, he's, I, 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 I struggle to process it on an almost <laughs> daily basis. Because it's, again, it's, it's the reason why I'm successful in America. Like it had it not been, like it's, it's, I, had I not been on Conan, you know, fucking seven times in five years, which was like a big you know, statement. That's a huge thing for your fucking credits. Oh, well, it's, like, it's, that, that got me Netflix. And that's especially his, it. especially his audience is perfect for you as well, because it's a younger audience. It's not mm -hmm. the typical late night staying up to 11, 30, 12, 30 audience. They're young. They're engaged with that type of content. They're open to it. But what I've always liked about Conan is that he's, he's genuinely seems to be the type to leave the ladder. Same, Jeff, first of all, genuinely seems like a decent guy, which I'm sure like can be rare in that business as well, but he's a really good interviewer. Like yes. I learned, I've interviewed Bill Burr a few times. I'm a big Bill fan, and I learned how to interview Bill from Conan. <laughs> just let him go. Just stay yeah. out of the way. You know, yeah. just and let people be funny. Yes, he's very good, Conan. Yes, he's he's good at basically stepping to the side and then sort of keeping you on track. You know, he will. You know, it's the he'll soft serve back to you. You know, but he's like he does it like a master ping pong player teaches somebody young. Like he'll just get the ball back to you in a nice easy swing, and you can pummel home the punchline. And you're coming back here next. You're coming back here in 2023, right? You're coming back to Vicar Street in 2023. Are you doing Am two I... dates? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, so just, just, just got to be a microphone on a stage. And just remind me what city I'm yeah. in before I walk out. Man, man, I am at the joyous part in, of my career where you are not fucking far off. Like, <laughs> man, just, I know where I am in the next couple of days. And that's because my fiance will tell me. <laughs> um, I Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I say yes to all the gigs. Like, 
tomorrow my agent might send me down and be like right so in two years do you want to gig here here and here and we'll, I'll be like okay yeah I need a break here I need a break here but the second I leave that office deleted I don't remember those dates I don't remember those fucking cities I've got no fucking what wasted space what 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 does it gain me knowing those things are coming up I like to live you know the day to day and then occasionally you get like a boarding pass email to your phone and you go oh fuck I'm off to uh, I'm off to Estonia tomorrow <laughs> Eh, uh, I guess my I guess I'm not helping you with the kid tomorrow. My bad. I, I guess I'll pack. Sorry. Whoops. Has that changed things now as well? Because I know you, you, your fiance recently had a baby. Has that changed things for you a little bit in terms of going away and coming back? But she's obviously aware of what you were doing. You yes. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Men. Oh yes. Oh man. Absolutely. Like when we were courting and falling in love was when I was. It was just after the Netflix success. So I was touring for ten months a year. Uh, you know that was the three hundred shows over 18 months where I was a man I was I was just away constantly um so she I mean she, yeah so she knew what the fucking job was but also the reason I mean I always said the reason I grafted so hard for 10 years and toured so fucking relentlessly isn't just because you know I enjoyed doing it but it's because I knew one day I was going to be uh you know start a family and when I did that I wanted to be able to slam on the brakes you know, I want to, and, and 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 you know what? It doesn't really feel like I have slams on the brakes. It just means I'm taking better. I'm I'm in a very privileged part of my career where you know I can go, I can gig just weekends and places where I want to. You know, I'll go to Australia for a month or two, and then you know come back. But then I can just you know hang around at home for two months and gig at the weekends and stuff, and and make a comfortable living off of that and spend every day. Um, with my family, which is, you know, it's 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 blessed, man. It's dead, it's dead good. I'm very privileged and fortunate to be in this position. I, I don't want to keep you too much longer. I appreciate the time, Daniel. But something I said, I actually, I said it to Michael as well, was that, and it, come, it, it speaks to that a little bit in terms of like, you could still do comedy, whatever nights, do your stand up, keep your stand up going. But like what Trevor Noah did at the Daily Show, because obviously the Daily Show job has come up. And I, I said to Michael, I was like, I think Daniel would be excellent at that. Because you have such a unique, and no interest, I'm sure, but you had, had you have such a unique perspective. From watching the the 2019 special in particular, I was like, you would be perfect for that because you'd be something fresh and new. With a gig like that, I'm not saying the Daily Show. I'm not trying to get a headline here, mm. but would a gig like that appeal to you in terms of not being on the road as much? Oh, I mean, I I, I like the idea more and more as I get older of a more stationary uh, part to this job. Uh, I don't think I'll ever not want to tour though. Um, like it's man, I get to play some fucking cool rooms and do some cool things. And like while I can't do that, I never want to give that up. Like um, but yeah, I mean if there was something at home I could do regularly. But man, I just don't man, I love watching hosts. I like, you know, I think, you know, I think Graham Norton is one of the best hosts. He's unbelievable. Like he's he's and he's so good, man. And it's a pleasure to watch and it's a pleasure to participate in. And stuff, and I and I love watching it in this in the same way that I you know I love watching stand up, but not with the same. Like I couldn't do that, man. I'm not affable to most people. <laughs> like, like I, I, man, if you like me, boy, do I come across as a sweetheart. Because if you like me, you paid attention to you know to like listen to my in depth narcissistic thoughts, and then be like, okay, well, some of those actually come from a good place. But for, at a surface level, I'm a piece of shit, abrasive thing to watch i swear uh, i have a very sharp face i have a deep monotonous fucking voice and i say horrible things to antagonize people with a glint in my eye and i just don't think that makes for a good tv host all you gotta do is contextualize it and it's absolutely fine that's it yeah oh man you know what i'd love to do like the shit that you know if if i felt i had the if i felt i had the talent the skill and the team behind me you know the sort of stuff that john oliver or uh fucking who's the uh john stewart like but i'm just man i'm not that level of intellect like those are those cunts read newspapers i haven't watched <laughs> the news in months <laughs> guys well i i genuinely i'd watch it i i really did I, like it's just something that occurred to me and i know that obviously that's in the ether at the moment mm. and you know the daily show is very who knows, specific. man i've said no yeah. heaps of things before you never know where your fucking career is going to end up but man, maybe one day i'll do panto you know <laughs> Well, Daniel, thanks for the time, man. The special is fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. Oh, well, well, I mean, please do. Please do recommend it enough. This is an experiment and it's got to go well. <laughs>